my nightmare cousin is demanding I use my mother's inheritance money to pay for her luxurious wedding, and my aunt is manipulating me about it. My mother passed away a few years ago. Being an only child whose father had passed a decade earlier, everything was left to me. This should surprise nobody, but it surprised my nightmare about Ellen and her health spawn cousin Courtney. They thought it was horrifically unfair. My mother was mentally ill, untreated, and abusive. I was frequently in low contact with her over the course of my adult life, and she often tried to make me feel bad about this by fawning over cousin Courtney before she passed. She'd often take cousin Courtney on trips with her. However, once she passed, Aunt Ellen got it in her head that cousin Courtney should get a share of the estate so she could keep taking trips on my mother's money. This caused a good bit of fit tossing and family strife. Cousin Courtney even tried to sue me in small claims for the cost of a trip. My mother had been talking about taking her on before she passed. Cousin Courtney didn't show up to the court date and lost by default. Apparently, she didn't think she needed to for some reason and was very upset about it. I wasn't really thrilled by the lost vacation day, so my sympathy was beyond limited. Fast forward to last month, Aunt Ellen called me to inform me that cousin Courtney has gotten engaged. I make appropriate noises while thinking to myself the poor sod has made a terrible mistake. Aunt Ellen then makes this bizarre comment about sending her a check. I'm all what? According to Aunt Ellen, my mother had promised cousin Courtney money for her wedding should she ever get married. Now this seems ridiculous to me on multiple fronts. I am not my mother. My mother gave many a rant on how foolish it was to waste a down payment of house level money on a wedding. She's a bit dead at this point, so whatever she promised died with her. I say no a lot and stop answering calls and emails from this diseased branch of the family tree. Some backstory. Aunt Ellen and I already had bad blood about weddings. She invited me to a previous family wedding, then told everybody there I was a rude no-show. My level of interest in writing her a large check for cousin Courtney's wedding is somewhere below my interest in poking a nest of yellow jackets while in Kent, and the chances of it happening after the lawsuit is somewhere around my cats not yelling at the fridge when dinner's late. Let's also pause to acknowledge that the wedding plans are intense. We're talking destination weddings at an expensive resort, multiple photographers out of season flowers, designer everything, and so forth. Her idea of what she needs for a wedding approximates something they'd cover on one of those cable channels that has convinced people that 10k dresses are reasonable. My own wedding was extremely small because we prioritized paying off student loans. There's no reason anybody reasonable would think I'd buy into this level of Instagram dream wedding being necessary, but this community isn't about reasonable people. Cousin Courtney then lands on my doorstep. I foolishly let her in and heard her out. Mind you, this is an adult who is engaged to be married and a doctor in a particularly highly compensated specialty. She probably makes triple what I do. Unless she's being screwed by her employer, she doesn't know what to do. And Ellen has cut her off. I can't fathom Aunt Ellen would ever do this, so I'm a bit gobsmacked. Cousin Courtney has gotten everything she's ever requested in life by tossing tantrums until Aunt Ellen or her husband hands it over. Well, for once, Aunt Ellen has drawn the line. Apparently, Cousin Courtney planned the entire wedding without consulting Aunt Ellen under the assumption she'd get as much money as her half-sister had for her wedding. The one I was uninvited from. Turns out, no. That money had come from the other side of the family and Cousin Courtney had to pay up or she'll lose her deposits. Aunt Ellen has refused to help, claiming she can't remortgage the house again. She's done it too many times already to buy things for Cousin Courtney and the money just isn't there. My position is that this is not my problem, but Cousin Courtney has never budgeted in her life and has no idea how. Aunt Ellen is still kicking in money for her rent monthly so she can live in a safe building with a doorman. So I make a terrible mistake. I advise college students professionally. One of the modules I have is on financial planning. So I whip that baby out and sit down with Cousin Courtney to talk about how to set up a budget and save for her dream wedding. There's no way she and hubby to be can't do this with their combined incomes they buckle down and plan for it. This is where things get really nuts. Cousin Courtney's expenses are crazy. She lives on takeout and multiple caramel soy calorie bomb coffee drinks a day. She needs those because her work as a doctor is so stressful. She has a country club membership that costs $1,000 a month. The real kicker is her cell phone plan. It's an absurd, unlimited plan that's priced higher than current rates with her carrier. All she's got to do to save herself some money each month is call them up and switch to the new plan. She won't do it. Why? Mommy always deals with her cell plan. She hates calling customer service people. She hates being on hold. It's just not that much money and she can't ask mommy to do it because she's not talking to mommy. Since she got cut off, this is around when I realized all she's done this entire time is whine about how expensive everything is and refuse to do anything constructive. Her reason for agreeing to go through this budgeting exercise was to show me how poor she was and how much she needed me to cough up the money for her wedding. My motive was to get her to finally do a bit of adulting. She was decidedly uninterested in that. You can't help somebody who won't help themselves. It's just not possible. When she realized I wasn't going to be writing a check, she dried up the crocodile tears and flounced. There was some very unfortunate name calling as well. The final coda to this absurd drama is that she made up with mommy. No, mommy didn't switch her to a cheaper cell phone plan and get her sorted out with a budget. Aunt Ellen called, using an unfamiliar number to tell me how mean I was to her precious spoiled brat and that my mother would have wanted her to have a perfect wedding. I hung up and blocked her mid-rant. Update my nightmare cousin is demanding I use my mother's inheritance money to pay for her luxurious wedding and my aunt is manipulating me about the wedding being off. The happy couple thought so much about the wedding plans they broke up. I talked to her ex-fiancé last night. The story goes that they've been fighting about the wedding cost for some time and a big payment was due on the venue. They had to pay up or lose their initial deposit and booking. She wanted to pay without any idea where they were getting the rest. He wanted to cut their losses and lose the deposit. It all came to a big ugly head and he ended things entirely because she wouldn't back down. Hopefully, they stayed broken up. I'm told they've broken up a few times before so no guarantee this one sticks. Update. I regret to inform you Courtney is back in my life and as absurd as ever. So it was a work day and I was waiting for a Zoom meeting with my intern. An unfamiliar account pops up in my personal room waiting room, so I assume it's my intern trying from some other account she has. Big mistake. Up pops the window and there is cousin Courtney with a big smile on her face, acting like we're somehow speaking. Now you're probably going to tell me I should have instantly booted her and you'd be right. 
I should have. Boredom and curiosity got the better of me and I knew getting rid of her was only a click or two away. She flat out pretended we were on great terms and started making socially awkward small talk. I humored this for a bit before asking her why she'd contacted me. Well, her parents are having their 50th wedding anniversary coming up soon and she wants to do something special for them. They've always wanted to go on a cruise and she wants to send them on one. So she starts blathering on about the cruise. She's picked out how amazing it will be, a dream come true, and blah 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 rainbows. So what does this have to do with me? Well, she knows things have been tense between the US and she thinks my donating to the cruise would be a great way to reconcile. There was a long sales pitch of nonsense, short. She wanted $2,000 for me to fund this. Even worse, she mentioned others she'd been asking to donate and included her half-sister in the list. Her half-sister was laid off in March. Asking me is a pointless waste of time. Asking her half-sister is downright cruel. I told her this flat out. She whined a lot about how I just don't understand what it means to be married and how important celebrating that is around. When she was working herself up into tears, my intern managed to send me a connection request. I was very firm that I wouldn't be donating, asked her not to contact me at work ever again, hung up on cousin Courtney, and had a lovely chat with my intern. I was admittedly a little baffled by cousin Courtney, even wanting to give her parents an expensive gift she's never been known for being generous. I decided to call my gossip monger uncle, who always knows everything, and ask what he knew about this. Turns out she was soliciting the whole family for donations and she was planning on going on the cruise with them. Worse, since she lost so much money in deposits when she cancelled her wedding and something I didn't totally get involved in an abandoned lease with a now ex since they're broken up. Her gift was going to be planning everything everybody else donating was doing the paying for her dream cruise vacation with her parents. Suddenly the world makes perfect sense. Update 2. Last we heard from cousin Courtney, she was trying to pull together a 50th wedding anniversary cruise for her parents and her and make me pay for a large chunk of it. Despite the fact, I had previously refused to help her with wedding donations. I wasn't down with that. She whined a lot about family and how important it is to celebrate a marriage that lasted this long. I blew her off. Well, hold on to your hats and glasses. Aunt Ellen and Uncle Dimwit aren't legally married. Uncle Dimwit is still legally married to the woman we all thought was his ex-wife and mother of cousin Courtney's half-sister, cousin Jessica. Yes, you read that right. They are having a 50th anniversary of having held a ceremony that was not a legal wedding and the groom is still to this day married to his ex-wife. This all came out because cousin Courtney apparently really was trying to send them, including her, on a cruise and found a cheaper option that was some kind of special deal for couples having a big anniversary, so she needed a copy of the marriage license. After a lot of awkwardness, they eventually had to admit they had none. The story goes that Uncle Dimwit's ex didn't want to go to the trouble of or pay for a divorce and he's too much of a Dimwit to think to get one in absentia. So they just ignored that he was still married. He figured the ex would want to remarry one day and be willing to do the paperwork. Then Aunt Ellen was in her. We live in a commune and don't want the government in our lives flower child days, so had no objection to the wedding not being legal. Time passed and it never got handled. Nobody in the family ever knew. They thought they went to a real wedding. Pretty much everybody is really angry about being lied to for all these years. Cousin Courtney is completely thrown out of whack by this and is fairly inconsolable. For once in my life, I have some genuine sympathy for her. They've been lying to her for her whole life and it does actually have to be totally bewildering for her. I'm apparently still the black sheep because I should have somehow known and told cousin Courtney. How the hell was I supposed to know this? Why would I have ever checked on their marital status my entire life? I was told they were married. I saw wedding pictures. There's also a weird side of Aunt Ellen blaming me for her finding out because it never would have happened if I just donated to the more expensive cruise in the first place. Luckily, I've successfully ducked cousin Courtney and the rest, having drama about all this. I only know they're mad from emails I'm not replying to in chats with Gossip Uncle, this is the plan going forward. Do not engage with crazy.